For this video, I want to do something different. If viewers like it, there might be more like this, but for now this is the only one I have planned. So let me know what you think down below. Here, for your consideration, are six true stories of the supernatural. All of them come from first-hand experiences posted on the subreddit, The Truth Is Here. Each one will be linked in the description below. So, if you've encountered similar events, feel free to reach out and comment on the original posts. If you doubt what these people have to say, then that is up to you. A uh, few of the writers have told me that they were skeptical themselves before they experienced these things. So please keep an open mind. Joining me on this video is a person who regularly makes reality-based content on disturbing and true events, dark and grim. A link to his channel will also be below. Check it out and don't forget to subscribe. Now, on to the events as related by those that experienced them. Number 1 My buddy Fats and I were on a job call. He was 24 and I was 22 at the time. We were sent from Albuquerque to Lordsburg. We used a TomTom -tom as our GPS navigation. We took the Interstate 25 South to Interstate 10 to Lordsburg, about a five hour drive. Once we arrive in Lordsburg, things started to get weird. We arrive there and the job site is closed and our foreman has no paperwork for me and my buddy to be there. Faced with the fact that we can't work and we just made a state long drive, we call our girlfriends and tell them we're coming home. We reset our GPS for home, but instead of taking us the way we came, it shows a route north into Silver City and almost cuts a straight line through the mountains to Albuquerque, cutting our drive time in almost half. Me and Fat say fuck it, so we take the new route. Once past Silver City, entering the Gila, it starts to snow. About an hour into the trip, the radio cuts out, so we put on a door CD as Riders on a Storm comes in the forest gives way to clear land. In the distance, we see giant walls, like castle walls. We get a sense of unease. Fat tells me to check the GPS, but it doesn't show a town, just a straight line. We kept driving. This is where I get goosebumps even telling you this story. Once past the walls, we see a town, but not like a real town, like an artist's rendition of a town, like an oil painting. All the houses look dark, black, with some grey, except for one house, which looks like a TV is on in the living room. We're freaking out at this point, and we don't dare to stop. We keep driving. Out of nowhere, there are dozens of cars, parked, lining the road. Fat says it's like the twilight zone out here. The sense of dread washes over us, a fear like being watched, but not seeing anyone. It's primal. Fat starts driving faster. We finally leave the houses behind, only to see another set of castle walls. We drive through and again clear land and again into the forest. Once in the forest, the fear dissipates. We come to an intersection. We take a left and we are literally driving into our city. We arrive home to the shock of our girlfriends. They accused us of not leaving town when we said we did. We we'll look at our call history and it's only been two hours since we called, saying that we we're leaving Lordsburg. No one believes us and we don't tell the story often because of ridicule, but the fear I feel, even telling you all this story, is proof enough for me that it happened. Number 2 Hey guys, just want to share a story from many years ago at home. I was lying on my mattress one night, it was around 9pm or so. My mom was asleep on the small bed in the living room. It was after we watched a movie or something. At my feet, there was a tinted glass wall, light tea color tinted, not too dark. The room was separated from the hallway wholly by a glass wall. It was dimly lit inside, but the outside hallway and the stairs are lit with fluorescent light, so it was pretty clear. Suddenly, I heard someone coming down from upstairs. We have wooden stairs, and footsteps are pretty loud. So I looked and saw my dad walking down. He walked to the door to the outside of the house. I heard the sound of his keychains, a uh, clanging metal sound. Then heard him say, tell mom someone is outside. So I got up from my mattress and let my mom know. I was fully awake. 
But the thing is, she was kind of half asleep and told me that dad was sleeping on the couch. I half walked to the couch, and there he is, asleep. So I walk to the door to the outside of the house, turn on all the lights, and look outside the window close to it, and there was nothing there. Nothing outside. I'm quite sure that I was awake and had my eyes open, and to this day I'm still not sure what I saw. A friend said that it might be a friendly spirit trying to warn me of an intruder, but I don't know. I've never been a believer in superstitious things, but this is the only thing in my life that I cannot explain fully by logic and reason. Number 3 So this happened to me some 10 years ago during my pregnancy with my youngest child. I'd woken up around 5am on a sunny morning and I needed to urinate. I got up and visited the loo and settled back into bed next to my then partner and was stretching and closed my eyes thinking of the day. All of a sudden I felt pressure on my pillow like tiny steps. At this time I had no cats or dogs or other tiny footed kids in the house. I opened my eyes and I saw nothing so I shrugged it off and closed them again. A second later I felt the deliberate small steps move down past my body and onto my legs and kept my eyes closed not wanting to scare this thing away. Thoughts of my late dad popped in my head as I reasoned it might be my dad's spirit. All this time, the steps continued down. It made me smile as I was in a fetal position and it skirted round my feet like it was on the edge of a ledge. Panic set in as it moved between myself and my partner and I felt heat on my back. Red hot heat and I said in my head, I'm scared, I'm not ready. Then I saw white blinding light and passed out. My mother is traditional and spiritual and believes it was my baby girl's essence entering her forming brain within me. I've never had a repeat of that experience and sometimes I wished I'd had the bottle to stay awake. Sorry, just had to bowl it out there and see if you guys have had similar experiences. Number four. A while ago, on Saturday, August 31st, I go to bed and my bed literally had nothing on it that shouldn't be there. I fell asleep while watching some videos on YouTube and woke up at 3am. I wake up at 3am a lot and that itself creeps me out, but I'm used to it. Anyways, I take out my phone and I text some people. Then I feel something hard under me. I look what it is and it turns out it was a mirror. I put the mirror on the floor facing down and I start thinking why was this mirror on my bed? When I finally go back to sleep around 5 a.m., I start getting nightmares about moving toys, objects, and something like that. For example, in one of the dreams, I wake up and I look at my floor, and I see a doll on the floor, sitting, staring at me. I creep out and try to go to sleep as soon as possible. The dreams I had felt so real I can't even be 100% sure if they were dreams or not, but I think they were just dreams. When I wake up around 10 a.m., I asked everyone in the house that if they had put the mirror on my bed. I even asked my niece who was visiting with my sister. I asked my niece if she had even played with the mirror at all. She said no. Some time passes and I start doing other things. I had my cat's brush on my chair and it falls on the floor. I didn't really care about that at all since I had other things to do. Then when I later go in my room and I need the brush, it had moved to a different place. It was still on the floor, but it was far away from where it fell. Again, I asked everyone who could have possibly gone to my room and used the brush if they had put it there. They said no. That kind of made me feel... weird? Do you guys know what this could mean? Number 5 About a month ago, me and two friends went on a week-long trip. We stayed in a spacious apartment on a farm. Ground floor had a kitchen, living room, two bathrooms and a second bedroom with two beds that was rented out to other campers a few times while we were there. Upstairs was a large room with 11 bunk beds where the three of us slept. So one day my friends are upstairs and I'm in the kitchen cutting vegetables and preparing dinner. I'm just doing my own thing when suddenly the tap started flowing. Naturally, 
I freaked the fuck out and immediately ran upstairs to my friends. When we got back to the kitchen again, the water had stopped flowing again. One of the evenings, we were hanging out upstairs. The downstairs bedroom was currently empty, so there were no other people in the apartment. For some reason, one of the bathroom lights kept turning on. Someone would go to the bathroom downstairs, do their stuff, turn off the lights, and then when someone else came downstairs later, the light would be turned on again. This happened three or four times throughout that evening, but didn't happen any other night. The third thing is that, on our last night there, we kept hearing banging on one of the upstairs walls. This wall led to the outside, and there were no trees or anything that could be the cause. The banging wasn't loud enough to keep us from falling asleep, but it was loud enough to be clearly audible. Additionally, on this night, one of the cows in the barn next to the apartment was mooing very loudly, but I don't know if that's related. On this night, my friend kept seeing this light streaming from underneath the bedroom door, as if the lights in the hallway had been turned on. But any time she pointed it out, it would be gone before me or my other friend saw it. There were no other people in the apartment that night. Some stuff might have happened before the tap water incident, but after that incident, which happened on our fourth day there, we started to really pay attention to possible weird things since we were at a loss for how to explain that incident. I'm not well versed in paranormal stuff, so if anyone can shed some light on these events, he'll be much appreciated. Number six. Two weeks ago, my little dog Max died. He was diagnosed with an illness a few months prior with an uncertain prognosis, but I could tell the end was coming. My best friend was going to pick me up at 9 a.m. on Friday morning, and I was going to have him put to sleep as his illness was progressing and his quality of life had declined severely. However, the night before we were going to take him, he passed in his sleep, which I thought was a blessing. He was in his bed right beside me. Me and my two best friends had a nice little funeral service in my backyard that evening where we buried him and told silly stories about our little buddy. The whole thing was bittersweet. We shed a lot of tears, but we also had champagne and talked about his little sassy yappy self. Two nights after Max's death, me and my young daughter were in the kitchen playing pretend lemonade stand. She was standing and I was sitting on the floor. When I pushed up off the floor and twisted around to get up, I saw a 3D, grey, almost opaque, but just so slightly transparent version of Max. He walked from behind the kitchen island and walked right up to the kitchen door that leads to the back porch and just kind of slowly faded through it. There were no defining features such as nose, eyes, or mouth, but the body shape, head shape, ear shape, and gait were a complete giveaway that it was Max. He's been mine for 11 years, so I know his body and his walk as good as my own. I was pretty jarred, but wrote it off quickly as my grieving brain playing tricks on me until my three-year-old looked up at me and said, Mama, was that Black Shadow Max? How did he go through the door? I was gobsmacked. If I had seen it myself, I wouldn't have given it much thought. But the fact that my toddler saw him too makes me think my brain was not playing tricks on me. I still feel so weird about it. My toddler thinks it was the coolest thing ever and won't stop talking about it. Although, now she is confused because I reiterated to her a dozen times, in an age-appropriate way, that Max was not coming back after we buried him. Now she keeps saying I lied to her. This happened less than two weeks ago. Maybe a folie à deux? But I don't think so. Any similar stories? <laughs> 